Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Professor Yamin Chen, and uh, I'm currently the chairman of uh, International Master Programs Telecommunication Engineering from uh, National San Yasen University. And uh, I'm very happy to have a chance to uh, give you a brief report about my research and uh, about the IMPTE and also uh, about uh, NSYSU. Okay, so as you can see from this photo, uh, this is our compass. Uh, it is embraced by uh, the ocean and the mountain and near the Kaohsiung city. So actually, this is, uh, our compass is also a famous uh, tourist spot in Kaohsiung. And uh, uh, sorry, uh, I, uh, okay. So uh, the NSYSU uh, is founded in uh, uh, 1980 and uh, is named after the founding father of the Republic, Dr. Sanya Sen. So uh, although we are still a very young uh, university, however, we, are, we have already become the, one of the five best university in Taiwan. And uh, our university is located in uh, Kaohsiung City, which is in the Southern Taiwan. And uh, we currently have uh, seven colleges and uh, 22 undergraduate programs and 50 master programs. Of course, IMPTE is one of them and also 32 doctoral programs. And uh, according to the latest QS World University rankings, we got the uh, 412 positions in the uh, world universities and also 73 in Asian universities. Okay, so uh, about the MPTE, International Master Programs in Telecommunication Engineering, uh, we are founded in uh, uh, 20 years ago. At that time, we are the first of its kind in Taiwan. And uh, as you can see, uh, we currently have only uh, 20 students, uh, which means that we are not the that program which wish to uh, recruit lots of our uh, students. Uh, instead, we wish to focus on the students which are truly full of potential and uh, got self-motivated. Okay, so uh, uh, we uh, in our faculty members, we only have uh, 14 faculty members in our program. However, four of them, four of us are uh, actually fellows and uh, most of us are uh, editorial boards of uh, various uh, actually journals. And uh, the entire program uh, is divided into two groups. Uh, the first one is called uh, the systems group. We got seven uh, faculty members. And uh, this group is focused on uh, the research of wireless communications. And uh, we also do machine learning and cooperative communications and also technologies for 5G and beyond communications. Okay, so another group is uh, the EM Wave group. Uh, we also have uh, seven faculty members and some pos possible uh, research topics includes the electromagnetic theory, antenna theory, microwave circuits, and also some uh, radar system design. Okay, so uh, about myself, uh, my name is Yamin Chen, and uh, I am the faculty member of uh, the system group of IMPTE. And um, I'm also the current director of IMPTE. And uh, my research interests include uh, wireless communications and uh, non orthogonal multiple ACES. We, we know that this is a kind of a, a child, uh, technology for 5G and beyond communications. And I also focus on the design of error correcting codes, especially for the, the 5G communication and beyond communications. And I also do some uh, machine learning studies for wireless communications. And finally, I, I focus on the, the design of biometrics. So for biometrics, uh, it's uh, like, uh, uh, for example, the recognition of iris or the fingerprints or some uh, biosignal processings. And, and uh, in the year of 2000, uh, I received an excellent mentor award from the College of Engineering, NSYSU. And also in the year of 2020, 2020, I received the IEEE Tainan Section Best Young Professional Member Award. And at the same year, I also received a Best Paper Award for Young Scholars from uh, the IEEE IT Society, Communication Society, Taipei and Tainan Chapter. So, so I want to uh, introduce this uh, award especially because this is the award that only awards to one person once in uh, two years 
and uh, the person should be a young scholar uh, under 40, 40 <laughs> years old. Okay, so recently I also received the NSYC awards for distinguished faculty member in academic research. And uh, about my current research grants, uh, uh, I have currently three fundings. Uh, the first one is from uh, this is uh, my cooperation with the Qualcomm Taiwan. And the uh, topic is about some AI assisted design of uh, error correcting strategies for the next generation wireless communication systems. So the second one comes from the government. Uh, this is from the, the Ministry of Science and Technology. Uh, it's about some uh, advanced research on uh, sparse code multiple ACEs. This is a kind of NOMA technology, okay? And uh, the last one is, uh, th this is actually a national project. It's, uh, 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 it's a big project. You can see the grant is about uh, 236,000 US dollars. So I'm one of the co-PI of this project. So as you can see, the funding of my lab is quite sufficient. And uh, I currently published uh, 21 IEEE journal papers. It's all in our communication systems and uh, 27 international conference papers and four patents. All right, so this is the first topic I want to share with you about my research. Uh, this uh, research line is about the design of a near optima at sparse code multiple ACES code books. So SCMA, this is uh, uh, one of the, the newest NOMA, uh, now orthogonal multiple ACES technology for the 5G communication and beyond. So as you can see, no matter in the uplink system or in the downlink system, we have several uh, users and each of the users will utilize some of the resource blocks. And also for different users, the, the resource block they utilized may overlap with other users. Okay, so maybe some of the, the information overlaps on different uh, uh, resource block. So they, as you can imagine, they that will cause some uh, interferences between the users, right? However, if we can carefully design the code book of different users, we are able to enhance the performance of this communication system. So uh, on this research, I first reformulated the design of SCMA signal metrics to the problem of the space kind code design for MISO and CISO, MIMO, CISO systems. So the two problems, design problem, they are actually the same. Okay, so if I can reformulate this problem to the design of space and codes, then I can apply some conventional design metrics such as the, the simple distance and uh, product distance for the design of SCM code books. And then I introduced the uh, reinforcement learning and the uh, deep neural network strategies for the design of SCM code books. For example, as you can see on this figure, I just, uh, 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 reformulate the problem of, of assigning a specific value on the code book as a decision on the RL tree. Okay, so using this kind of a uh, strategy, I can do the, I can use some AI based technologies for the design of SCMA code books. So as you can see, the, uh, in the right hand corner, this is the example on AWN channel. So I, as you can see for different users, uh, their signal constellations on different resources are different. Okay, so this can be optimized using DNN structure. So using these structures, we can achieve near optimal performance for both CISO and MIMO SCM schemes on AWGN, uplink, and downlink relevating channels. Okay, that's the brief in introduce of uh, this, uh, this research topic, and I have published uh, three papers for on this topic. And the other topic I want to share with you is uh, the design of belief propagation based polar decoders with schedule diversity. We know that the polar code, this is a special code, a uh, novel uh, error correcting code. It has been adopted by the EMBB scenario on uh, 5G communications. So this is, this is a new code. However, the code is adopted by the control channel. We know in the control channel, we need some code with very short code lengths. So um, under this assumption, the polar code, uh, the performance of polar code is not sufficient. So the, de the design of the encoding and the decoding strategies are very important for polar code to improve its performance. So the current design for the polar decoders all based on 
uh, uh, something called successive cancellation decoding. This is a sequential decoding. So it means that uh, the, let, the, the latency of this decoding is, is high and the throughput is, put is quite low. So if we can change this to uh, be using the design of B, uh, belief propagation, we can improve the performance and the throughput, uh, the mainly the throughput of the decoder. However, if we are talking about belief propagation, we need some special design. For example, we have found that uh, the decoder of polar codes, it can be reformulated to become a telegraph, which is very similar to conventional LDTC decoding. However, we found that in the telegraph, we actually have a lot of puncture nodes on this graph. So the decoding strategies need to be carefully designed. So we have designed a decoding schedule uh, especially for the polar codes. As you can see on this figure, it achieves a fast uh, convergence speed and uh, an excellent converged error performance. So by using this special decoding schedule, we can concatenate it with a novel list decoding strategies. So the final result as shown in this figure, the result is the performance is very similar to the current uh, the polar decoder using SCL with a list size of 32. However, as shown is in this figure, in the highest region, we can provide much lower uh, decoding complexity comparing to conventional polar decoders. Okay, so this is a topic I'm currently doing and it's still, it still is uh, under research. Okay. So for the recruitment of, a, uh, I wish to recruit for a master and or a PhD students. And uh, we are actually seeking for students which wish to uh, have the opportunities to study, live and work abroad. So what I, I can offer you is the opportunity to work in uh, some world leading companies as introduced by Ms. Lin. Uh, uh, as we know that TSMC is the world leading semiconductor foundry, right? So, uh, if, for my graduate, my master degree student graduated in the past three years, we have already some of them work in TSMC and three of them work in MediaTek, which is the world leading 5G smartphone IC design house and also the world's fourth largest IC design house. And some of them work in a real tech, also very good company in Taiwan. So uh, actually we have more cooperation opportunities with Qualcomm and other companies in Taiwan. So this is something I can offer you uh, if you enter in my uh, research group. So if you are interested in my research, uh, I also offer uh, internship for BS students. So actually this is a requirement for entering my um, uh, research, uh, research group because I want to, before you really in, get into my group, I wish to work with you for a while, which means that I, I may, I may uh, give you some materials to read and uh, you need to report to me and uh, maybe I will have some re assignments and also some small project projects for you. Okay, so the intention is that I want to truly know about your personality and I also know, want to know the status, your current status so that I can decide if I, I want to accept you to my group or not. Okay, and I also wish you to have a GPA over 3.5 out of four. I don't know how to calculate the GPA in India, but uh, in the well, States. About, yeah. yeah, about eight out of 10. Yes, eight out of 10, yes. Yeah, sorry. Uh, so this is uh, the standard for US, uh, the, the GPA in US, the United States, okay? And uh, for the IELTS, uh, I wish you to have a point over 6.5 out of nine. Okay, so, uh, but, of course, you need to pass the recruitment of IMPTE first, right? So about IMPTE, uh, I'm the director of IMPTE, about 80% of the students get a tuition waiver. And uh, also IMPTE provides a scholarship for every student about 5,000 per month, $80 per month. So uh, this, if you got admitted, uh, every student got the, 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 the scholarship, but um, of course you need to maintain your GPA on a, 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 on a level, okay? It's because uh, uh, most of them, are, first of all, you got tuition free, free waiver, right? So uh, the uh, I think, uh, for example, 
uh, if you go to the restaurant in the in the campus and uh, if you have have a meal, it's about only sixty six six sixty to seventy US dollars in uh, the restaurant. So I think five five thousand is uh, for for food. I think think is sufficient. Okay, so uh, this is per. I want to say that uh, this is specially provided by IMPTE. So for our, I, I, we don't guarantee for other programs in our school, we don't guarantee that kind of scholarship, but only for IMPTE, we have this uh, scholarship. And uh, as I mentioned that uh, you need to maintain your GPA to a, a specific level so that you can get the scholarship, okay? Okay. And uh, uh, if you are interested in uh, our program, uh, you need to pay attention to the application and the admission timeline. So for uh, for example, uh, we have a, a spring semester admission. It is the application begins in uh, October uh, to uh, September. And uh, if you got admitted, then uh, the semester begins on February next year. So similarly for four semesters, uh, the application is on January to March and the semester begins on September. Okay, so if you are interested in this, please pay attention to the timeline and you, you need to search for uh, some related information on our website. Okay, thank you.